Is Bitcoin on its way to a brand new all-time high above $75,000? That is what I'm going to be telling you right here watching this video. I'll be giving you my perspective on the charts, the upcoming trades, the very important levels, and actually two resistances that we are hitting right now, which you may not be aware of, but you absolutely should be. These are very important levels and very important times. My mission, of course, with this video is to educate you so you can learn about the markets. I can share with you some very nice insights and the knowledge that I have of Bitcoin. And of course, the main target is to get you ready for the profits and the gains that are upcoming in this chart. And before I get into the analysis, I just want to start by referring to one comment that I received in the last YouTube video that I made a few days ago. And that was one very simple. People are starting to lose interest in crypto due to sideways price action. My comment replied to this is very simple. Those who lose interest will miss out on all of the gains to come. And as this guy says, exactly what is needed for a huge pump. People start losing interest, they start exiting the markets, and that is when it turns green and people have to FOMO back in at the highs. Of course, that is not what you want to be doing. And this is where we have two categories of people when it comes to the markets and it comes to trading, when Bitcoin starts to go sideways. This is nothing new. Bitcoin absolutely has massive pumps to the upside, but it does have times of consolidation where a lot of people find themselves bored. They find it too choppy. They don't want to be taking any trades. They end up closing out the market and looking at something else, forgetting almost about Bitcoin, and then they wonder why they miss out on the move and have to end up FOMOing in at the highs. Why? Because they simply lose interest. That is not what we should be doing. We need to be category number two, okay? And that is keeping our eyes on the market at all time. So even when Bitcoin is going sideways, even when it's not offering any trades, in my opinion, we still have to be doing the analysis on this every day because there are heads up, there are signs of what was to come. And that is what I will be sharing with you in this video to give you the context and then explain what we're looking at next, what we next need to be aware of because it is absolutely very important. We cannot be getting bored. We cannot be losing interest if you want to actually be profiting on these moves. Okay, so I hope you're not category one. I hope you didn't get lose interest and, and move away from crypto and now you're back up the highs. We're here every single day looking at the markets and getting ahead of the curve before these moves. So what is going on right now? Well, as mentioned in the last video, we actually had a very interesting situation on Bitcoin, right? We had this very uh, kind of unique, because it doesn't happen too often, situation where we actually saw a perfect double top on Bitcoin, where this secondary high here was put in $2 lower than the first high. And we actually then had a low, which was slightly front running $60,000. And then within this trading section, we're left in a little bit of a difficult situation, okay? Where it's a very high probability for price to rise and taking out that double top and likewise to take out the big psychological number, okay? So at this point, it requires a little bit of patience. And this is where you have to differentiate between remaining patient, analyzing the charts, getting ready for a long OK, if we take out psychological numbers or getting ready for what happened in the end of a reclaim of resistance as support and then thus expecting higher. So remaining patient with a plan, of course, is much different than losing interest and walking away. If you remain patient with a plan, you are going to be lining yourself up for profits. And that is what I done yesterday. I actually saw this situation. I wasn't keen on taking a new long, wasn't keen on taking a new short. Why? Because I felt there's a very high probability of taking out the double top and rising and the same probability of taking out the psychological number so i remain patient and really simply wait i was waiting for my key level above us at sixty-four thousand dollars. what happened next well we saw stock market rising which is very nice to see of course i have my longs on the stock market the index i have my longs on uh, some individual stocks too right Shout out NVIDIA, still looking for plus $1,000. Uh, <laughs> but on Bitcoin, the same, right? We were looking for then at this point then to $64,000, which really simply in the end, as you go into New York Open, flipped into support. We had the initial wick, then we get back above. This is during New York as we're coming into uh, the initial balance close. You can see here at around 3.30 more or less, we start to get our candle closes above 
$64,000. This is then considered, in my perspective anyway, uh, a reclaim of the level. So $64,000 was our next resistance. We break through the double top. That liquidity sends us straight to 64 k and we start to flip it into support. At that point, I make it very clear to my team, this is flipped into support, so there's clearly no short trade. And while it holds the support, the bigger target is, in fact, around $67,000. I had, during this consolidation period, not taken any new shorts or longs, but of course I do hold that long still from the failed auction at $58,000. Okay, so I am still in that long trade, so you're aware. So really simply, we had the high probability of a drop and rise. So in this scenario, we remain patient. Price went on to take out the double top and pump to $64,000. We reclaim $64,000. Thus, the highest probability is a move to $67,000. After the reclaim of $64,000, here we are today at $66,000. Okay, so you can just see from playing those probabilities, understanding strength and weakness, Absolutely. Once you got that reclaim of $64,000 right, we have seen a increase in price of around three and a half percent. For one day of trading, that is a very nice rise indeed. Okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, so now that's given you the contest. What are we looking at next? Okay, so I've already made this clear over on Twitter, right? Personally, the bigger target is $67,000. Okay. Uh, still long from the failed auction, no need to overtrade this. But what can we, in terms of, um, what can we be aware of in terms of what could hold price down from hitting that $67,000 target? So that's what I want to talk you through now. And this is something that I really would like you to pay attention to because I, I do feel it is uh, very good uh, insights. And that is the way that my brain is trained, okay? And it, it comes through training, right? Because you don't naturally think like this. But it's understanding the aspects, okay, of true probabilistic trading. So as we were trading down here at this point, I knew there was a high likelihood of the rise and also to take out the psychological. So that doesn't offer me a trade, right? I knew above us we had 64,000. So once we reclaim 64,000, we start getting these nice candle closes above. Again, could have been a fake out, but from my perspective, that was a reclaim, a bullish reclaim. We look towards 67K. But I know as a trader, well, we've already moved up over $2,000, so that's lovely indeed. But I know as a trader, we might not make it to the bigger target of 67,000. There is absolutely the possibility of us turning down before this. And why would that be? Well, for technical analysis reasons. So let me show you a few reasons right now of resistances that you need to be aware of. First of all, very standard, pull that Fibonacci. Fibonacci from the major pivot high back from the 8th of April down to the low of the failed auction. You can see that right now we are into the low of the CC Fibonacci. This is, of course, a level that we are very much aware of that can hold price down. Would you like to see what we have as confluence at this level? Well, you all remember the sideways range that we've been trading, right? Well, what we simply need to do is add on this parallel channel. That was from our range low up to the range high. Okay, so if we just take this up to the absolute high of this, we then had our range low, range high. We obviously done the failed auction reclaim of the range low, which as you all know, that's where I took my long trade, which I still hold today. And that then brings us up to the middle. You see, we're in the middle of the parallel channel now. So this is another resistance to be aware of, the middle of our higher term time frame channel that we are trading. And one little tip before we move on, you see how we reclaimed 64,000. That was a old support flipped to resistance back into support. That is exactly the same theory that we used yesterday to recognize the strength here as we did to recognize the strength of the failed auction, right? So this was an old support. We lost it, flipped it to resistance. At first, that is resistance naturally, but as you get above and get the retests, as you get the reclaims, that becomes very bullish indeed. OK, so it's a different time frame perspective, but you could have took a long trade from sixty four thousand dollars reclaim. Right. Just as I took my long trade from fifty eight thousand dollars off of the failed auction reclaim. It all depends on your style of trading. And I'm just putting ideas out for you here. OK, um, but yeah, naturally, I am looking for 
$67,400 next. Why? Because we have this really lovely time naked point of control just above the old highs from the 22nd, 23rd of April. Here we have a major lovely little pivot and above us. But again, I want to make this clear. I am aware trading is a game of probabilities. We can turn down now and we could front run this major pivot. And if that is the case, I will understand truly why we in fact would have rejected from the middle of our channel on the CC Fibonacci low. Okay, that's the confluence that we can see clear as day we're currently rejecting from. Well, rejecting, we're consolidating below. So we all know consolidation below the low while we hold market structure is all good. There's nothing to, well, in my opinion, for anyway, <laughs> I'm not worried about this at the moment. Okay, I am very much aware we can full on reject from here. And as what I view this market as changing probabilities all the time, what would change my perspective of currently looking for continuation to the upside to saying to myself, okay, this now looks weak. This is now a time where I could say, mm, it doesn't look like the probabilities are still for higher. Well, first of all, and the most basic, okay, is what we should be doing on lower term timeframes anyway, right? So we have this more of a lower term time frame. again, ranges, ranges, ranges. We have more of this lower term time frame range where we had a range high, we had a range low. We've done a little bit of a fake out of the range high onto the CC, bringing us back down to the range low, little bit of a fake out of the low. Then you got a bit of a third touch setup, high fake out, third touch back to the middle of the channel, right? So what would then be our first sign of weakness? Well, first sign of weakness, my friends, if you're paying attention, would be a loss of this channel, flipping it into resistance. So not something that we see a failed auction, but flipping it into resistance, holding it as resistance. Then what do you have? You then have a market structure change with some high, low, lower high. Breakdown of here would be a lower low. You would then have a market structure change and a loss of your upwards channel. Okay, so the channel high. Clearly, then you are into this large area of inefficiency. Okay, line in the sand would be $64,000. But each step of this path is is decreasing the probabilities of higher and increasing the probabilities of a pullback. $64,000 remains support, but lose that. And well, it's going to look very bearish, right? So we can only trade what we're given. Okay. And this is a point that I made to the champion members yesterday. It's all well and good forming predictions and, you know, trying to predict the market. And I do agree that, of course, has its use case and is, is beneficial. But we are not actually trading predictions, are we? In essence, what we are doing is trading reactions that fit a prediction that we have made. So right now, do I need to know as a trader if price is going up or price is going down next to make money? The answer is no. I do not need to know where price is going next to make money. I do not need to know that information. It is irrelevant to me whether price goes up or down next. Why? Because I can profit on this market whatever happens next. If we go up, I can make profit. And if we go down, I can make profit. And it's not that hard. We just have to be prepared. Okay. Be prepared with a plan. Wait for that plan to come to fruition. For example, hit a target zone that we're waiting to enter and then check the reaction. So we are trading the reactions, not the predictions. Okay. So for example, what we could be looking at right now, in terms of, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to remove that lower term time frame parallel channel. Bam. I'm going to zoom back out to the four hour chart here because I don't want this video to be too lower term time frame. And I'm going to be explaining what the next bigger levels are then. So if we add back on those naked pointed controls and higher term time frame levels, do you recognize the uh, harmonic that we have going on right now? One, two, three, four, five. Well, I'm going to show you. <laughs> we actually have this really nice harmonic going on now, which is. So this is this is a this is actually a bearish harmonic because point D ends in a rejection. But the the thing here is it still has more of a increase in price, right? So let's say we fall down here, uh, not not a uh, not out of the realms of possibilities, right? We I've, I've ever explained this. We're at the middle of the channel. Okay, we are at the low of the CC. D absolutely could be put in here. 
it could be. <laughs> where, where would we be looking for D, which would cause more of a, uh, in my opinion, even more bearish a harmonic, okay? So we got a three pivots to be aware of, right? Simply taking out point X onto the naked point of control at $67,000. We all know $70,000 is the big psychological above us. And then we look at the monthly at $71,000. This harmonic, again, is valid in each place. So how do you know whether D pivot, for example, is 67,400 or 70,000 or 71,000? The answer is we do not know. We do not know now which, which pivot that will be. That is impossible to know. So again, what do we do? We set our alerts and we trade the reaction. I do not know whether D is here, here, or here, or even here. What will give me higher probabilities, let's say, that D is put in here? As I just said, we change the local market structure, we lose $64,000. That will give me high probabilities that D pivot is in. But if we are to continue higher, the support locally holds, well, I'm going to look for then D pivots higher, right? And for example, we come up, let's say, to $67,400 and we end in a swing failure pattern or failed auction. I can absolutely take a short trade there, right? But I would take a short trade there, not with the perspective of trading back down to 60K at that time, but to trade back down maybe just $2,000, look for a retest of our current consolidation and look for that to hold a support, okay? So what I mean by this is I can absolutely come up here and take a short trade at this point if we get a swing failure pattern. As price comes down, I could look for support to hold off of this mini range point of control. And if it does, you know, I would have D put pivot here. But if support holds, we see continued strength, then I would say the probabilities is continuation higher and then look for my next pivot around $70,000, right? But if price is to come up here, hit the naked point of control, come down, lose the support here, and we end up breaking down, changing local market structure, getting acceptance below $64,000, well, then I'm going to be looking for a much bigger drop and D pivot to be put in, right? You can see I'm not predicting per se, because I am predicting, but at the same time, I'm telling you, I am not going to be set in stone by a prediction. I understand pivots can change. What I'm going to be doing is trading a reaction. I have my plan in place. I'm not getting bored in this market. I'm not losing interest in this market. Trading is my life. I love it. I'm here every single day. And it's all, it's all I do. This is who I am. This, I'm a trader, right? I love what I do. So, um, yeah, there are times when Bitcoin goes sideways consolidation. It doesn't offer many trades, but I'm still here. I'm still putting in the work and I'm still analyzing these charts, getting ready for that next trade. While Bitcoin's going sideways, is there altcoin opportunity? Yes, but we do not forget about Bitcoin to trade alts. We monitor Bitcoin, we get ready for the moves, and we can take advantage of some of these wonderful altcoin moves. Bone, by the way, and AVAX ones that I'm liking at the moment. Of course, you all know Peve. But nevertheless, like the altcoins are offering up some opportunities, but we cannot forget about Bitcoin. That is that is the most important of all, from, my, from me anyway, anyway. But I love Bitcoin the most. But, you know, I still will trade altcoins when given that opportunity, right? And so, yeah, fi final uh, words. From, actually, let me, let me end with a little bit of talking about one, one few things that I would like to end with. First one, and then second one. You know, really simply when we talk about trading, if you made money during the drop, learn. If you made, if you lost money during the drop, learn. We are never at the top of the game. There is always room for improvement. We will all lose trades. We will all miss trades. Okay. It's how we come back from that that shows us true spirits. I wish you all the best in your next trade. Okay. We, we can make mistakes. We can lose trades. And it's not about taking L's from losses. It's about taking L's of lessons, right? Every trade that we take, we can learn from. Whether we win it, whether we lose it, whether we miss it, whether we enter in FOMO, whether you enter in fear, whatever the reasons, whether you win, whether you lose, there always is something to learn. And that is a mindset that I integrate into myself. And honestly, it helps me become successful. I, I class myself as uh, pretty successful when it comes to trading, right? I've, I've, uh, I've made the amount of money that uh, can last some lifetimes. So from that perspective, I consider myself pretty successful. And how do I become successful? It's because of that passion to learn, the humbleness to admit I'm never at the top of my game. There's always room for improvement. And so if I'm able to integrate that still today, to been doing this for over a decade into my trading and realized there's always room for improvements, 
you should be doing the same. There's no excuse why you should not be doing the same. And I, on it, of course, I recognize you are of that mindset. Why? Because you have made it through this video. If you weren't having that mindset, you would have clicked off after I talked about the next levels. People that are looking for signals, they are here in the videos. And guess what? The people that are coming in, listening to levels, going away, ultimately, they are just going to keep losing. Why? Because you need to have that level of education. Okay? You need to. You need to educate yourself. Why? Because then you're not dependent on me. You are dependent on yourself, your own analysis, your own plans. And trust me, you may be hungry for signals. You may be hungry for me to even just do all the analysis, line up a set setup and say, oh, this is the trade. Yeah, you, could you make some profit off that? Yeah, <laughs> but that's not going to last in the long term. That's not going to help you. And I will even tell you this, signals, they still aren't even working. Even if I laid a signal on a silver platter for you. You could take that long trade the exact same as me. We could make some profits, but then you're not going to be able to know where to get out of that trade if it starts to turn bad. I can enter a long, trade it up to resistance, be looking for higher targets, but start to recognize weakness, close out of that trade. Let's say then I close my trade within a minute, price has dropped. Okay, I've got out of that trade with profits. If you're following a signal, you're going to come in and be like, well, I, I made a loss on this trade. What went wrong? I'll be like, I was reading the charts. And I just want to really make that clear. If you, if you are not educated, if you do not understand trading, you're going to lose. OK, so you can chase all the signals you want from my channel, from other channels. But I'm telling you, it's a loser's game. It's a loser's mentality. And it's not going to work. You might get some short term profits. You might even get a bit of a winning streak at points, but eventually you will lose it all. And that is why it's so important to learn in trading or in life with everything. But particularly trading, you really need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, I, I do fear <laughs> for your longevity in this game. OK, and the last point that I wanted to make was uh, to, to this comment, actually. So really simply, um, despite being financially free, you're still down to earth, helping people, sharing knowledge while following your path and not dwelling, dwelling into negativity. This is truly inspirational and calming. And I want to make this clear, too, that for me, this is very important. OK, and honestly, the more you surround yourself with negative energy, the more negative you will become. I personally pride myself on being happy, helping people reach their trading success, helping them live their dreams, period. Right? That's what we do at Chart Champions. So there is no time for trolls. There is no time for ne negativity, right? Why would I indulge myself in that when I can indulge myself in helping people succeed, literally living out their dreams through trading, right? So I have so much to do. I have so much to provide. And again, I integrate this level of learning into my brain. It helps me become successful, period. How also do I help myself become successful? It's by not surrounding myself with that negative energy. These people that will bring you down, always got something to complain about, always got some negative view of what's happening. Guess what? I used to actually indulge myself and surround myself with negative people. And guess what? I started to have negative things happen in my life. As soon as I saw the light, as soon as I realized this, that takes a lot of a lot of self-reflection. OK, but once you start to realize this, you're going to start to cut those ties. You're going to have to if you want to be successful. You are maybe going to have to change your friends who you're hanging around with, what you listen to, the videos you watch, the people that you follow on Twitter. All of this is going to have an effect. So if you truly actually want to have the right mindset, you just simply, period, have to surround yourself with the right information, the right knowledge, and the right people. So that's my perspective. <laughs> I try my best, as always, to maintain a happy, positive spirit, even while there's so many negative people around me trying to enter my space. But guess what? I'm blocking it out. I'm focused on you. I'm focused on my goals, my passion, my calling, which truly is trading education to help people reach their goals, reach their dreams. And I cannot do that if I'm doing anything other than being here, being active, being transparent and honest with you, with my analysis, with my trades, what I'm looking at next. As mentioned, this month, I am starting my live trading. This is going to be transparency to a next level. I'm going to be doing things people, other people are not willing to do. OK, I'm going to be lining up my trades live on stream, showing you exactly the trades I'm taking. We'll be following them week on week. You'll be seeing the PL as it grows. 
Okay, I really want to bring this to a new level. And, you know, of course, I've done my challenges in the past, right? You've all seen me turn one Bitcoin to 10 Bitcoin, two Bitcoin to 20 Bitcoin, etc. 10,000 10, to a million dollars. I've done it all before, but I want to do it in a way this time where it's just you are seeing every trade that's being taken. And it's very, pretty simply, transparent, transparent and honest. That's what I want to be doing with this live trading streams. If you want to be tuning in on that. That is what I'll be hosting via chartchampions.com. Okay, so when we come back over here, if you want to be getting in on that live trading, then I will be starting this month, uh, yeah, via the platform chartchampions.com. Of course, that's where you've already got the whole educational course. That's where you've got the inbuilt journal, the competitions, the cheat sheets, the glossary, the speed runs of the overall course that we got. And of course, on top of that, we've got the live trading streams. We've now introduced the new power hour. So if you are a futures trader, we got a lot more futures content now. But of course, the live trading and with myself signed up uh, this month. And I think I, I think it's going to be a very welcomed addition. So you'll have the whole of the coaches line up with our live trading streams, with the new power hour, with futures content, with crypto content, with commodities content, everything that you need to be successful, right? Add on that the dedicated altcoin live streams, the daily live streams every single day of the week. Okay. So if you don't want to be waiting around on YouTube, because I'll be honest, the updates here are sporadic, right? I might go one or two weeks with not doing any videos, but I will be every single day in the Discord giving updates, talking trades, doing my live streams, as long as, as well as, right, the other coaches. We got the Asian session updates. We just got content galore. Everything that you need is in this one stop shop. And this is obviously my baby. This is my pride. This is my love. And it, it is my calling. This was created to aid the people, learn to trade truly turn around their lives. And you can see for yourselves, people that get to very dark areas and people that lose nearly all of their money on trading. There are the success stories of those people that have been at their very, very lows and have turned themselves around into successful traders. And I can hold myself high and proud that a lot of that reason is down to the education that we've given them at Chart Champions. And I feel that's, uh, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing uh so yeah i hope that you've enjoyed this video i hope it's made sense let's keep our eye on the harmonic understand the resistance that we're currently at with the cc middle of the channel and let's continue to do what we do best trade the charts understand the probabilities understand and trade the reactions if you want to see more from me and the rest of the team chartchampions.com thank you ever so much hope you've enjoyed and that is me signing out cheers thank you and goodbye Bye.